Is there a secret sauce to making music, something that propels songs to the top of the charts? Just what makes a hit is a question that intrigues our David Pogue. And the Grammy goes to... Alessia Carr. When you win a Grammy, the judges tell you that your song or your album was the best of the year, but they don't tell you why. Shallow, Lady Gaga. They don't tell you what they liked about it. But surely there's a science to writing a hit song. I went on a quest to find out. What makes it a hit? There are various notes that go with various chords. And if the sentiment is right, it gives you that in the groin, in the heart, you get those chills. Can you understand that? Yeah. I love, I love, I love my calendar girl. If anyone understands, it's singer and songwriter Neil Sedaka. He wrote a huge string of hits starting in the 50s. Love Will Keep Us Together hit number one when Captain and Tennille sang it in 1975. Breaking Up Is Hard To Do hit number one in 1962. Don't take And then again at a slower tempo in 1976. Don't you leave my heart. In misery. When you're writing, do you ever think about music theory stuff like, oh, this should be a scale? I write vocally, uh, usually not more than an octave and a couple of notes, so that uh, it's singable. You can write songs that everyone knows, but you can't write songs that everyone sings. I'm every woman. It's all. A key ingredient of a hit is the hook. A hook is uh, the main, you know, thought of the song. You know, like, ain't no mountain high enough. That's the hook. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, uh, you want that to be memorable. Baby, there ain't no mountain high enough. Valerie Simpson and her late husband, Nick Ashford, made up the performing duo Ashford and Simpson. They wrote songs for singers like Diana Ross, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, the Supremes, Chaka Khan, and for themselves. Is there something that you do that sort of signals, this is the hook? Like, do you make it louder? Do you... <laughs> well, you want it to pop, that's for sure. So you might, you know, go up cordially, so it sticks out in a way that it grabs your attention. Solid. That's exactly what she did in her hit, Solid. Solid as a rock. That's what this love is. We live in such a fragmented world, right? And hits make you feel like the world is maybe a slightly sort of smaller and, and more connected place. John Seabrook is the author of The Song Machine, which describes how hit songs are written today. Are there elements that can be counted on to make a hit song? It clearly has something to do with repetition, because the brain loves patterns that it can recognize. A perfect example is the Taylor Swift song, Shake It Off, and not just in the catchy chorus. But this is the real genius of a pop song, is to make something that's simple enough to be kind of repetitive, but doesn't get boring after it's been repeated two or three hundred times. And that's very, very hard. Help, I need somebody. No matter the era, the ingredients for a hit song have always been melody, rhythm, harmony, and lyrics. But today, the way songs are written is almost unrecognizable. It's not even called songwriting anymore. It's called production. Used to be writing a song back in the 1960s was you sit at a piano and you pull out a pad and you write a song. Well, production is that now. You pull out a laptop, you have a keyboard, and you produce a track. So when you say track... So the track is just another word for the instrumental portion of a song. 
Okay. It is important to be able to maintain. Oak Felder is one of the most sought after songwriters, I, I mean producers, in pop music today. He's created hits for singers like Britney Spears, Rihanna, Ariana Grande, Alicia Keys, Kelly Clarkson, Jennifer Lopez, and Demi Lovato. I've always said that music is a way to, it's like a conduit of emotion between the creator and the listener. It's the way that you can make a person cry listening to a ballad, or it's the way that you can make a person shake their booty in the club. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I frequently shake my booty. You frequently really in, in clubs. Oh, that's that's all, amazing, all man. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> Baby, you're so Felder got a lot of booties shaking in clubs with his monster hit "Sorry Not Sorry," sung by Demi Lovato. It hit number one in 2017. Oak Felder has created hits for plenty of stars, but could he create one with me? I want to propose an exercise. I didn't tell you that we were going to do. Oh God, here we go. I have an idea that's been running in my head since I walked in the door. Huh. I've always wanted to meet you. Huh. Could okay. you do okay. something like that? Of course I could. We could do like a straightforward, like urban track with some pop chords. I'm gonna get you to scratch that vocal. Uh. I've always wanted to meet you ever since I heard your voice. Since the day we first met on the street, you Ooh. made me feel I had no choice. That's crazy. I love that. <laughs> Dude, you're a genius. The idea is, it was your idea. No, it was just a, it was just it was a goof. Idea. I was just reflecting off of you, man. <laughs> While I waited for my royalties to come pouring in, I tried to remember everything I'd learned about making a song a hit. A memorable hook with just the right amount of repetition. A singable voice range. I'm in love with the shape of you. Relatable lyrics. Love will keep us together. But according to John Seabrook, there's one more ingredient. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. It's not just all, you know, machines and cold production. At the heart of it, there's still magic in the air. Valerie Simpson says the same thing. My inspiration is to say it in a way that you haven't heard it and uh, hope that it means something in your life, that it touches something, you know, something.